Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, bringing you a grand solar minimum update on Thursday, February 22nd at 11.44 p.m. Mountain Time, 2018. You're looking at the stratospheric radiation from March 2015 through May 2017 that was taken at 37 degrees north latitude here in eastern northern California. Showing a 13% increase in cosmic rays that results in increased cloud nucleation and flooding. So we're going to come over right away to the map. Showing over 500 rivers here. Here we are at the National Weather Service. Flood map showing over 500 rivers at or above flood stage currently. Over 500 rivers. It was at 600. But we have 35 gauges at major flooding. More rain is predicted for this area. And record conditions like this will continue. State of emergencies have been issued. River flooding has triggered states of emergencies. And that just went off the map here. We'll come back to it. River flooding triggers water rescues, state of emergency declarations across central U.S. Persistent rounds of heavy rain along with melting snow have caused several key rivers. Several. <laughs> 35 major rivers are now well above flood stage. A record number of rivers across central United States to reach or approach major flood stage this, re this week. Cosmic ray flux much. 19 people were evacuated from low-lying areas in Indiana. And on and on. Drinking water is affected. Wastewater treatment plants are flooding over. Homes are being destroyed as we speak. That's a nice dress. I'll leave you links. Do your own research. There's so much to cover. More snow, messy commuting on the way for Seattle area. This headline was changed. It used to say record, record low, but it doesn't say it anymore. They don't want you to know there's a record low. But I'm going to tell you, the cold system that brought an inch of snow to Seattle and wreaked havoc with Thursday morning's commute also resulted in the city's first record low temperature in seven years. The low temperature at SeaTac Airport dipped to 26 degrees, shattering the previous low of 30 back in 2005. It's getting colder and colder in Seattle. And they're getting more and more snow. Records are being broken in the Northwest. Almond farmers facing sudden threat. Bitter cold temperatures dipping into Southern California. Bakersfield, the warmer January weather provided a nice break during the county's winter. But farmers said Wednesday it's harming their crops. Ask Don Davis. He manages 1 million acres of almonds. When we get warm weather in January, it's kind of like your kids waking up at 3 in the morning and thinking it's time to go. And we don't like that. No one likes trees waking up early, especially when record cold is followed right behind. Heads up to the peach crop. Coming to a crop loss list near you. Record snowfall totals for Bozeman. Heads up, Montana. They've already doubled the average snowfall total. Here's the report. Winter season to date is impressive for Bozeman and Belgrade. Current Bozeman MSU has total season to date snowfall at 107 inches. On average, they're usually at 53. It's ranked as the highest snowfall total for the season to date. Today's first boom. Guys, that's a heads up. If you saw my geothermal greenhouse update, we have snow on the ground here. I'm right here, right on this little orange patch. We have upwards of three foot of snow predicted to, through Sunday in southern Colorado here, and we need it. So this is getting the snowpack back to normal in a glorious way. 
And that's a heads up. Here's the snowfall totals for the uh, Saturday and Sunday for you, Pacific Northwest. You're going to be buried, Washington and Oregon. It's looking like 12 to 24 inches in some areas. Michigan's going to get hit, as well as Wisconsin. And New England is going to be looking at snow up to 12 inches. Which just all got washed away, but it's coming back. And if we look at the GFS models, temperature averages for the last week of February, well below average in California, especially those almond-growing regions. Above average out here, especially in the Gulf Coast. And then as we go into March, below average for the entire lower 48. Extremely low temperatures in Montana and Wyoming. Heads up, wheat crop. Does not look good for the winter wheat. Triple the number of extreme cold days this February in Saskatchewan. <clears throat> there have been more extreme cold warnings in Saskatchewan this winter than in previous years. Wendy Wenwinski finds out. Blah, blah, blah. On Wednesday morning, Environment Canada issued its ninth extreme cold warning in February for Saskatoon. This is a La Nina winter. All it takes is a little bit of wind when you have temperatures around minus 30 to drop the wind chill off to minus 40 where they start issuing the warnings. Arctic air and snow to blast the UK next week. Brutal cold is on the way to the UK as air from Siberia will travel down into the British Isles. I was looking at the models, guys. It does not look good for you, especially the first week of March. Here's the timestamp up here, February 23rd. Here's the 24th. I'm just going to blow this up so we can watch it through. So UK up here. There's Sunday the 25th. You can see that Arctic air coming in. Monday the 26th, 27th, by the 28th, UK minus 10, moving into March 2nd and 3rd. It's looking cold. That's Wednesday. Friday, March 2nd. And then you're finally free on the 3rd. So it is going to be, this cold blast is going to come all the way down into Europe here. Heads up, UK. That looks cold. Whew. So I'll leave you links to this article and the models. Deep freeze in the UK. Met Office warns of disruptive snow as the Siberian freeze is set to hit. Brisbane weather, Queensland storms to bring months worth of rain. They've already broken all records in Australia here on the West Coast and there is more to come and it is unexplainable. Up to 300 millimeters of rain across the weekend in one of the worst starts of the wet season to date ever. So first the west, now the north, and the east. Is there an explanation? I imagine it could be what we've been predicting for years, that as we descend into the grand solar minimum and cosmic rays increase, we're going to see record flooding, epic deluges. Biblical flooding. And that's what we're reporting on. There's been an uptick at Mayon. Mayon. Mayon volcano spewed incandescent lava fountains and ash plumes as it continues to exhibit increased activity in the past 24 hours. Incandescent lava fountains up to 100 to 600 meters generated dirty white and gray ash plumes that rose up to 800 meters from the summit before drifting west. Phil Vox added that seven episodes of lava collapse Pyroclastic density current and pyroclastic flows were visually observed. <coughs> and this volcano is not done. 
historically uh, erupting in big ways during grand solar minimums the last time in 1815. Same time Tambora went off, as well as Cadivar, which is also awakening. This is due to the increased cosmic ray flux, heating the muons in the subsurface, creating certain volcanoes worldwide to explode. Earthquake 3.7, Oaksfjörde. We've been watching the uptick in the swarms. We're going to go live and we'll refresh it so we can have the freshest data on the planet about Iceland earthquakes anywhere. Coming right here from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. We'll even translate it for you. And so last night when we were doing the report, we noticed this little uptick here, this little high density after the seismicity had fallen off. We were calling this an uptick in uh, density in earthquakes. And sure enough, there has been an uptick in the last 24 hours quadrupling the number of earthquakes that happened in the previous 24 hours, including a major 3.7 that I just showed you. So we're watching it. It does seem to be falling off, but the intensity and the number of quakes in the last 12 hours is very high, and they're all centered up here in the north. So we're watching Iceland to light up the skies soon. Interesting activity here, seismic update. <coughs> <clears throat> Yellowstone area really popping off. Guys, check this out. And I'm not just talking Yellowstone because Yellowstone is just here in the center where we have 2.7 coming in today. Let's go to all magnitude. And you can see that this g entire region is being ringed by uh, a 3.0 in Soda Springs and a 3.2 in Lincoln. And then in the center here, we have a 2.7. 13 kilometers west of Yellowstone. So this is an uptick uh, which we should be watching. We also have some New Madrid activity in Missouri and Tennessee. <laughs> and things are getting interesting. Quakes of note, we have a 5.0 popping off in Chignik Lake, Alaska. Down the Aleutian chain, nothing but volcanoes there, folks. More activity in Indonesia at 5.3. Aftershocks over in the Greece area. North America is rocking today, folks. And we're going to be watching it. Space weather has a little bit to do with it. Uh, we had a plasma density stream just come through seconds ago. And it's probably coming here from this massive, there's a massive coronal hole here that's barely visible, but it's mostly extended down here to the southern portion where you can see the dark area here. But this is mostly a coronal opening right here. And some of the stream has reached us early. Noah and others were predicting this not to reach us for a day or so. Here we are at the solar minimum sun, but there is definitely a solar wind stream that has hit us in the last eight hours the solar wind speed went to 400 to about 520 this is kicking off some pretty intense auroral displays and we're not even in geomagnetic storm we're just right now in geomagnetic instability at kp4 but the aurora is coming all the way down into north america check it out maybe in wisconsin definitely in maine the very high probability in Canada for very high auroral views. So if you're up here in this part of Canada, go outside. And this is going to maybe dip down a little further into North America as the night progresses. So great aurora watching evening here for New Brunswick. And up in this area in uh, northeastern Canada. And that is because a coronal hole wind stream is now affecting us unexpectedly early. Just got off the radio program with David Dubine on Mini Ice Age Conversations. Our first radio show next week. 
is Wednesday, February 28th, 10 to midnight Eastern Standard Time. The Inconvenient Truth, Prepping for the Grand Solar Minimum on Revolution Radio, which you can find at freedomslips.com. Just go to Freedom Slips and get familiar with it. If you want to chat during the show, you have to um, sign up there. So go get familiar with Revolution Radio if you're going to be a regular listening to the radio program. That way we can all chat live while I'm doing the show. It's the day before many Ice Age conversations. Had an awesome two-hour talk with David Dubine and Bill Porter from I Grow Organic. And so let's talk about our first guest. I've reached out to Robert Felix. Not by fire, by ice. From Ice Age Now. He's happy to come on the show. He might do the first uh, the first episode. I'm waiting to hear back from him. But we have many guests lined up. We might get Christian Ice Age Farmer on for one of the first shows. As well as Lee Wheelbarger. Definitely going to be lining up uh, Anita Bailey, PhD, author of Cold Times, that we were hyping up a few months back. And if you want to be on the show, send us an email to Oppenheimer Ranch Project at gmail.com and just tell us why. We'll be happy to put you on the show. And that's a heads up. Guys, I hope you got something out of the video. Times are changing. Time is to get the word out to friends and family to start preparing for what's the inevitable. Here's the CMIP model coming from the mainstream, which shows that the planet is going to continue to get colder for decades to come. And we know now know from new scientific evidence that we're corroborating with historical documents that the Earth is entering a rapid cooling phase where volcanic activity increases, causing a rapid drop in global temperature, resulting in crop loss and famine and global unrest. So the time is now to start preparing to survive and thrive in the future. Keep watching and be safe, everybody.